Hello and once again, welcome to The Phone Show. I'm Owen and here's a look at what we've got in store for you today. WWDC 2014 is on the approach and with that in mind, we're taking a look at what we think iOS 8 will have in store. Recent leaks have pointed towards a handful of new features, the most tantalizing of which is a new watch utility app. Is this the biggest indication yet that an iWatch is on its way? Of course, what good would it be talking about iOS 8 if we didn't also mention the iPhone 6? We've got the latest chatter surrounding what's expected to be Apple's biggest iPhone revision yet. What treats will it have in store? Well, that's a question for our smartphone experts, Gareth Beavis and John McCann, who are once again on the sofa to offer their insight in today's episode of The Phone Show. So we're back and we're going to be talking phones. It's going to be a storm today, John. Are you excited? Always excited. We're going to be talking phones, operating systems. We're living the dream. And then more phones, maybe. Pa. Who knows? This is going to be great. Cool. First up, WWDC. It's coming, beginning of June. Yep. Are you excited? Always. Apple events, always exciting. iOS 8 is probably going to be announced. No, it's definitely going to be announced. Probably. Every year so far for the last 84 years, there's been an iOS version, so it's got to be this year, right? Is it going to blow us away, though? Maybe, maybe not. The rumours have brought some new things in. Healthbook is one of the interesting ones, but we don't know the details of that, so we don't know how integrated it's going to be. Is there going to be an iWatch as well to go along with it? Well, it's, it's a weird one. I think iOS 8 isn't going to be that much different to iOS 7 because that was the big change. You know, you don't want to keep reinventing it again and again. I think there was a lot of criticism about the way iOS 7 looked because it was a bit colourful, a bit cartoony, but essentially Apple's going to stick with that and it's going to make it into an iconic brand. So it will be just adding in features like Healthbook and you know, adding in a few, maybe some apps from the uh, Mac world a little bit to make things a little bit more professional, but I can't see it being a big change. Yeah, editing any sort of documentation on an iPhone can be difficult. Screen size is part of that. The software available is also another part. We've seen leaked screenshots suggesting that we'll get new apps, preview, text edit, which should help that sort of slightly more business focused end of the device and iOS 8 across all the iPhones. I think the health book stuff, you know, people are starting to get their heads around this whole fitness thing. I mean, Samsung's gotten really heavy on it with the Galaxy S5. Um, you know, even the likes of HTC popped in some Fitbit stuff. You know, the whole a phone can be a pedometer very easily. It can easily you know, connect to some sensors. So I think fitness, while most people don't think of it as a primary reason to buy a smartphone or even a secondary or tertiary, it's definitely something that's going to happen more and more in the future. Um, and Apple you know, will launch an iWatch, but I, I don't think it'll be in the June event. But that health book app does give opportunity for an iWatch further down the line. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I can't see it being, you know, WWDC has never really been in more recent years a time for hardware. Um, you know, if some rumours about an iFablet coming at that time, I still can't see it. It still seems to be, you know, this is very much a software event. It's, you know, we're going to show you what's happening with a new operating system. Get excited about that. And then when the iPhone launches, it's like a double whammy. People that have got old devices still have something to get excited about. People who want to buy the new phone have got a really great operating system that really takes advantage. Um, and I think, I don't know, it's, it's difficult if it's to see whether it's going to be good enough because it's, you can say, is it going to be as good as Android? Is Android 5.0 going to be a threat? They're not really the same thing. It's, if you like Apple and you're into the ecosystem, it's, is it enough to keep me here? It's not whether or not there's something better, it's just whether this keeps me satisfied. And I think the iOS 7 changes with the control center, and like I said, notifications do need a change, and they do need to be upgraded. And we, you know, we've done some really good renders to show what we want to see with that. You know, The ability to swipe through and, and to see salient information. So if you've got, a, say, a meeting comes up, then you should be able to swipe through and see more information on that, not you missed a call yesterday and oh, I've just told you about it now because it was in a different column. You know, it, it annoys me a lot about that and it's, it's like Apple thought, well, we have to have a notification center like Android does and now Windows Phone as well and it just didn't really get it right. Well, Apple's in a safer place with iOS 8 anyway. If people were going to jump ship, it would have been the big change in iOS 7. Yeah. Uh, but iOS 8, as we've said, is going to bring a lot of the same sort of feeling and colours and design. So it's not going to be huge changes which may put people off. It's going to be useful additions more yeah. than anything. We've talked about iOS 8, what we can expect. The first phone to probably ship with iOS 8 is the iPhone 6. We're hearing loads about it. Is it going to be bigger? Are there going to be two versions? What are you hoping to see? Well, I mean, definitely the iPhone 6 is going to be the poster boy for iOS 8. It's always the way the iPhone goes hand in hand with iOS. Um, this needs to be a big hit for Apple. You know, for the last, I'd say, three versions, 4S, 5 and 5S, we haven't seen that much of a jump forward in terms of what consumers can really look forward to. I mean, yeah, the iPhone 5S was good in terms of adding in Touch ID, uh, a 64-bit chip is really good for future-proofing, 
<coughs> and the iPhone 5, yeah, it made the screen a bit bigger, but essentially it's the same kind of design, stretched a bit, and it's got a faster processor. To some people, that, that's not enough. And I think the iPhone 6 is definitely going to have to have a redesign. You know, if we looked at sort of the curved plastic iPhone, iPhone 2, uh, 3G, 3GS, and then the iPhone 4 jumped to the industrial kind of design, was a really big change. And I think that we need to see that again. It needs to be whether liquid metal is going to be used. It's something that Apple's had quite a strong you know, coordination with for quite a long time because it could make a really nicely designed chassis. Uh, it definitely has to have a bigger screen. I think whether or not people really want it, there's this notion that screen size is getting bigger <coughs> and having an iPhone doesn't give you the opportunity to do things that you want. I mean, I know you and me both feel like after using big screen phones, you can't go back down to the iPhone because it's, it's just too it's, cramped. It's really yeah. hard to you know, input text and, and, and to sw swipe around the screen. I think some people will miss that. And, and as such, I think we might see two versions, the iPhone 5C sequel, I think we'll probably keep that smaller screen because there are people that want that device. I mean, the Sony Z1 Compact, Moto G, these phones are still selling really well and they've got a slightly smaller display compared to you know, five inch devices. So I think, yeah, there's gonna be some big changes from Apple. Um, it will be coming in September as per usual. There's no reason to think otherwise. And yeah, it'll probably be joined by an iWatch. And with a, with a new iPhone, you can always expect a better camera. Apple are always big on saying how they've improved the camera each generation, even if it's sort of more behind the scenes improvements rather than a, we've bumped it from an eight megapixel to a 16 megapixel yeah. camera. Apple are unlikely to do a big jump like that. It's unlikely to challenge the megapixel wars of the Xperia Z2 or the Lumia 1020, yeah. but it, what it will do is a lot of behind the scenes stuff, sort of what we've seen on the HTC as well, who have done a lot of chipset design and work as, and all the back end processing. So Apple will continue that. Their eyesight camera technology is excellent so we can expect better photos. Yeah, and I, I, I fully expect to see an eight megapixel camera. I don't think we need to go any higher than that. Um, I think as long as you've got, you've got the key things of image processing, um, good optics, uh, and a decent sensor, those, those are the three things you need to work on. And, and there's talk about Apple once again, making, you know, improving low light, making sure that you can take pictures in a wider variety of situations, and yeah, improving that speed so that you know, the pictures you get are crisp and they're clear, Probably fo it'll probably follow HTC and Samsung and Sony with quick autofocus. That's it. That's a given. But you know, there's a reason why you know Apple Photos make up a large amount of the online sharing community. It's because it's an easy camera to use. You know, people that really enjoy a good camera phone probably won't go for the iPhone because it doesn't offer that much in the way of you know tweakery. It's getting better, but you know, there are much better devices out there. Like you said, the Z2, the 1020, the, you know, the new K zoom from Samsung. If you're that bothered, you'd go for that. But it's about making sure that camera that you happen to have is brilliant and, and that's what Apple and some you know, rivals are starting to really get their heads around at the moment and I'm, I'm, really, I'm really glad about that and I'm glad that Apple and HTC are keeping one level of it, you know, we don't need loads of megapixels. There's definitely a market for that and, it's definitely, and I'm not saying that it's wrong to do it for some people but for, for some manufacturers it, it's right to keep it simple and keep the megapixels low and I'm glad Apple is gonna stick with that. We're also hearing that the iPhone 6 may actually be slightly more expensive than the iPhone 5S when it launched and previous ones that would seem a bad move from Apple, I think. Uh, they've already got a premium price tag on their devices and they're already seen as high-end uh, products. Yeah. So bumping up the price even more would be, a, would be a strange move. Except for the fact that you'd have two different devices on there. You'd have a budget version, you'd have a more expensive version. That kind of offsets the problem mm. because it says if you want to pay less than to have the Apple experience, it's right here. You know, it doesn't have all the features, but for, like the iPhone 5C for a lot of people was just was good enough. You know, it was what they wanted and it had you know, a cheaper cover, but it didn't really matter. And I think by doing that, Apple's always commanded a premium. You know, I, I wish it was cheaper. I think, you know, spec for spec with some of the other candidates on the market right now, I don't know where it warrants that extra price tag, but it has charged that for years and people are still buying it. So it's difficult to say whether or not it's something you should criticize the company for. I'd rather it was cheaper, obviously, same with a lot of things. But there, there is, has been a small trend of, of things getting a little bit more expensive this year as, as you know, components get ever more powerful and, and you know things are shrunk down and, and it, you know the trend is ever so slightly upwards so I, if it does come more expensive I don't think it'd be that much more but hopefully it'll be holding something like you know really beautiful chassis that costs a lot or you know some really improved internals something that really warrants that price tag I don't think people really mind paying for. Well that's enough news from the apple tree but now it's time to take a look at what else has been going on in the smartphone world. HTC may be planning a plastic version of the One M8 to steal sales away from the Galaxy S5. The rumoured M8 Ace would feature almost identical specs to its shiny sibling. Although the duo camera may be dropped, 
in a move aimed at undercutting the plastic Galaxy S5 with a more affordable price tag. Meanwhile, in Samsung Town, rumors are hotting up surrounding a super high-spec premium version of the Galaxy S5. Asia Today reckons a Galaxy S5 Prime is on its way and will be offering up a QHD display as well as a new chassis material, which we're very much hoping to be metal. And finally, Google's Nexus range could be getting a premium facelift of its own. It's thought that Android is looking to invest $1 billion to get phone makers to jump on board its new Android Silver program, which could spur a whole new series of high-end phones for multiple manufacturers. That's it for yet another phone show. John, you were amazing. It was great. And so were you. Ah, oh, I really was. <laughs> uh, so like or subscribe to Tech Radar if you want to find out more about the latest phones, gadgets, tablets, all that jazz. And thanks for watching. Nice. Cool. Okay, good. <laughs> good. <laughs> I really was. <laughs>